It is here that beginning in 2013, the World Bank Group and the Climate Investment Funds helped launch PPCR. The PPCR actually, which is a pilot program for climate resilience, is one of the funds under the Climate Investment Funds. And it's really dedicated to um, mainstream climate resilience into development planning. Uh, but more importantly, it is meant to achieve transformation at scale. What we have actually done working with the World Bank and the, uh, the Excellent Development Bank, we have started uh, pilot schemes in two parts of our country, two provinces of our country, which are prone to climate change. Our areas are facing serious challenges of climate change, such as water shortages and floods in some cases. The climate change effects here, it's real, and of course, to me, in my own capacity, I would look at this as a disaster. When we are talking of these changes, they are in episodes which are both extreme. Climate change is no longer a matter of speculation. It's not a, a, a matter of people overstretching their imaginations. It's not a matter of fantasy. It's a reality. Climate change, climate variability is no longer a debate issue. Climate change is real here in Sioma District. We are witnesses to what is happening on the ground. The $36 million grant provided by the World Bank Group and the Climate Investment Funds is aimed at making climate change adaptation and resilience an intrinsic part of Zambia's economic development. PPCR, of course, has been the driving um, you know, project to establish the, uh, the Secretariat, including uh, supporting the, uh, the national component in mainstreaming, um, the uh, climate information aspects. In the Barotse plains of the Zambezi, floods used to be celebrated for their life-giving powers. Alas, climate change means all this is changing, and changing fast. We've not had even a drop of rain, and the situation is dire. Look at the skies, they are, they are clear which means we don't even have a sign of rain. Also, our predictions from a sand point of view shows that we are still in for it. Even the future is indicating to us that there will be increase in the frequency of weather extremes, climate extremes, especially in terms of droughts and floods. This problem of, of climate change, it really affected women, in that it's women who have to walk long distances. We have areas where the distances to the sources of water uh, are, are becoming even uh, further uh, because of the, 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 you know, the, the drought. We have a community where they have to walk about 22 kilometers just to go and fetch water. It is a woman who has to walk. Believe me, in these communities, men cannot fetch water. You, it, it's, it's one out of 100. You find 100 men, one, only one, one man would go and fetch water. One of the main achievements of PPCR is the fact that the pilot program has started building a long line of climate smart farmers and rural dwellers. Sasa Dokas, Maurice Kavindi Ndondi, Esther Mtumbanyambe, Modenda Idipe, Mova, Great Havasimbi, led us into naming them Zambia's climate warriors. <laughs> Welcome to Kazungula district of Zambia's southern province, where the drilling of this well has changed lives here. That day, it was really a good day. People were drumming, they were dancing, they were jumping, they were laughing. Why? Because they were happy seeing water pouring. It was really like a, a dream. The ball, uh, it was uh, drilled for the school. And uh, this time, uh, it's sustaining the whole lot of the entire community. We have, uh, 10 villages surrounding the school. So most of these people are using that bowl. To have water brought near to your home is, uh, you know, has you know, huge um, you know, benefits. This well was not sunk in time to prevent the loss of hundreds of heads of cattle. Cattle died because of no water. How many? It can easily more than 400. We don't have water in our villages. Keto, we don't have water for ketos. The keto is tight because of water. And it's very far away, it's water. 
maybe eight kilometers to go to the water. This youngster explains that he and his junior brother, pictured behind him, are still in anger because the junior brother lost four of his cows to dehydration. Give us water, boreholes. We need boreholes. Our problem is water. The first problem we have here is water. Could you have no water? Animals would be taken to Zambezi, 20 kilometers away. Welcome to Sananga and Nalolo districts in the Barutsi plains of Zambia's western province. We are going to the canal, one of the projects which we did in Nalolo district under Sianda. My name is Sasa Dokas. I'm the Zono Secretary for Sianda Canal Projects. The problem here is often that of floods. We used to have floods, stagnant water in the past years. So when the World Bank uh, funded us, we cleared our canals. We have seen the, the dredging or the clearing of canals, uh, which opens up the, uh, the hectares of land for various communities to grow their sweet potatoes. Uh, to grow their maize, you know, to grow their cassava, you know, to grow their, uh, their vegetables and, and to keep these gardens you know, uh, active throughout the year. Thanks to the clearing of the canals, another day is breaking across these plains. We have 2,000 beneficiaries in this area. We have more women, though the number I can't tell properly, but uh, we have more women than men. As you can see, our maize is green and the stems are very promising for good harvest. As you can see, we have planted cassava and in between here we have planted the maize. Less than five kilometers from Sienda, we met these two widows, Rita and Bonvita who showed us around what they say are much bigger farms than the ones they used to plow before the canals were cleared. They claim that the soils around the cleared canals are leading to better harvest. Part of PPCR-led efforts to make agriculture and livelihoods more climate resilient involves introducing more drought-resistant crops, such as cassava and sogo, which have been planted here alongside maize. When we visited, Rita and Bonvita had just planted their second cassava crop, and they had a message for agronomists. Agronomists, they said, need to find a cassava variety that takes less than a full year to mature. With the floods recurring once every year, the widows flag the risks that farmers on the Barotsi Plains face to see their cassava crop ripen for harvesting only to be caught in the annual flood waters in which they sadly rot. One of the most remarkable PPCR-funded canal clearing and agriculture boosting projects in the Barotsi Plains is in Natonga. To get there, we set out early from Zambia's lone river port city of Mungo in the country's western province. We headed east on the highway to the capital, Lusaka, before getting off the asphalt to drive another 30 kilometers on a rough, back-breaking, ever-winding dirt road. The road, or what passes for it, snakes through vast plains, through small villages under the shade of huge mango trees, and through what in many places are fast receding forests. It is here in Natonga, one of the over 50 villages situated on the slopes of these plains, that we met Mr. Maurice Kabimbi. He is the chair of the maintenance committee for the 21 kilometer long canal that has been rehabilitated here and that now benefits over 8,000 farmers. Well, the canal was cleared, the water levels were reaching almost two meters deep. At other sections of the canal, 
a human being could go in completely. You could only see if a man raises his hands, you could only be able to see the hands raised. Sporting a smart Italian made suit, which meant we could not take Mr. Kabimbi into his fields on the day of our visit, he speaks to us enthusiastically about the transformation he says PPCR support has brought to his village and to neighboring villages. The difference that is there now is that we are able to cultivate crops, especially maize. We are also uh, able to cultivate rice. Uh, those days, the area where we were cultivating was very small. Now we can cultivate up to closer to the canal. Uh, the water uh, levels are very low. They are just good for cultivation. Those people who have the strength, who are willing to cultivate, they are really doing fine. They no longer uh, face the challenge of hunger. Besides growing more maize, sorghum and cassava, farmers in Natonga have diversified into petty livestock rearing with goats and pigs, topping the list of preferred species. The problem of transport is uh, very critical here. As a community, we had uh, some time back sat down to discuss, to find the solution to the problem of transport. As you know, this uh, route is very rough. It has got too much sand. It is very far to the third road. What we would uh, be doing when we start harvesting is that uh, we are going to be using our ox carts, which are driven by oxen. But, uh, the problem is that it is very far from here to the third road. It takes us about three days to reach uh, the third road. Roads are an extremely important uh, sector. Roads are the delivery mechanisms for a lot of development. Roads are extremely vulnerable and you need to make them resilient. The need to rebuild the many low bridges that get flooded once the waters of the canal rise with annual floods is another concern. Meet, greet Habasimbi. We encourage people to go vegetable production, which you can do in January to December as long as you have got water, a source of water nearby. Greet is not one of the farmers that the PPCR has funded. Although he's one of those the PPCR is considering naming a climate resilient champion. The champion is a person who has been doing climate change adaptation strategies on their own. They're not funded by any organization. He's a person who the community can learn from. I could have not uh, have managed to sit back and try to lament about the weather that we are so bad last year. Greece investments in a solar powered irrigation system had made not only growing corn in the fields surrounding the dam possible, but had helped him extend support to 32 other farmers working with him to start their own gardens, leading to significant improvements in income for farmers in the Kasaya neighborhood. The irrigation equipment is now lying dormant because there is no water. One of the latest investments by Greed has been to start this poultry farm. I needed to like have a diversity of activities, yeah, so that um, uh, when uh, the, the, the irrigation system fails because of water, I can have another source of income, which uh, in this case, I think I thought of a pottery. Yeah, in here we have got uh, uh, three blocks of pottery houses, three by three blocks, in which um, uh, I'm keeping about a 60 a big female chickens, yeah, with about 10 cocks. And I think I have got uh, a number of small ones that have just, uh, because my chickens are now producing. While greed is known to PPCR, millions of farmers across Zambia have not had the chance to work directly with the PPCR. Yet, they too are making the adaptations needed to mitigate the impact of climate change. Meet Esther Yembe, chair of one of the community organizations on Better Island. The organization seeks funding 
to start a fish farm on this island. My project is uh, more. My household got there over six. This project is uh, constitutes uh, 66 households. Out of 66 households, uh, nine households are male-headed. Uh, the rest, 57 households, are female-headed households. And among us, the male-headed households, uh, some of them are disabled. They are even unable to, to walk. And uh, the, the, the women uh, are the majority in this project. No PPCR funds had been invested in the fish farm the women were trying to start here at the time of her visit. Um, this project, uh, on our side of the community, we have managed to do the following. One, we have identified the land for gardening, and uh, we have started land preparation, and we also began the uh, uh, gardening. From our garden, we also have made cells uh, from which uh, we, it has helped us to do uh, one or two things. The excitement in Esther Yembe's voice about the project is unmistakable as she shows us around the plant fish pond site. As required under PPCR projects, the women of Meta Island and a few male participants on the project have made additional investments one of them is this garden at one end of the plant fish farm site, the first of a total three gardens that they intend to grow around the pond. As she completes the tour of the future fish farm site, Esther Yembe got on a tread on water pump that her organization had recently bought and uses for irrigation of their gardens. She explains that the energy required to power the pump means most of the women in the association have to seek the help of young, stronger boys on the island to run the palms. These derks on the future pond site are part of the community's contribution to the fish farm. The other life do options that we can diversify into is poultry and also the rearing and the selling of cattle. Our team leaves Mbeta Island on the brief boat ride back across the smooth flowing waters of the Zambezi. At the Savwanda Dam in Kazungula district, the biggest problem that we are facing as women is the problem of water. Meet Edith Muba. <laughs> President of a ladies only club specialized in building resilient livelihoods for the women of Koma community in Kazungula district. If water was there as women, we would come up with gardens whereby we could grow vegetables and sell and then earn money to support our children to school. The women tell us of their future plans to grow gardens, maintain an orchard and expand their farms using the waters of the refurbished dam to irrigate their crops as well as use the rehabilitated dam to water their animals. The waters of this dam dried up so long ago the sun has baked the dam bed into gaping cracks, screaming to high heavens for rain. At the time of her visit, the rehabilitation of this particular dam was one of the projects that this community had submitted for possible funding from the PPCR. So this Rwanda dam is, uh, it can work as a multi-purpose dam because uh, once it is uh, well refurbished, it can sustain life by holding much water. Women in the village broke into music and dance as soon as they saw our cameras. The lyrics of their songs express hope that development partners will help them build a two kilometer long dam and canal they plan for this site. Very few dams across the drought stricken southern province of Zambia still hold any water. One of the few with water when we visited was this one in Kasaya. We learn 
that the water left in this dam at the time of her visit dates back from the last significant rains which had fallen two years ago, we were told. The muddy, filthy, stinking water in the dam has gone so bad that donkeys led to the dam for watering with our cameras rolling to record the action simply walked away, refusing to drink. These donkeys are making the choice of turning down the filthy water of this dam that inhabitants of the neighboring villages are unable to make. Along the banks of the dam, we were shown shallow wells sunk by villagers from which they were still drawing drinking water at the time of our visit, with the drought showing no sign of abating. In Zambia's western province, the drought is just as harsh. At this dam, built for watering cattle, we found not a single drop of water. Herds of cattle converge at the dam site after seeing us pull up and pack, hoping that a sign of life around the dam meant water was available. Here in Sioma district, water has become a luxury. The water situation is very bad here. Sometimes we clock a week without bathing. All our dams are now dry. Our animals are dying. Water here is ration. Uh, she can stay for three days without bathing. Right now, where, I'm, where I am here, I'm smelling because I can go close to two weeks sometimes no water. Two or three days can pass without bathing the baby. If there's help somehow, somewhere, please come and help us. If you are not going to think of the fellow humans here who are in trouble, we are going to just die. On the morning we arrived, villagers in Bome had just completed sinking this new well from which they could draw drinking water and water for the animals. It has taken them over three days to dig this wall. And they have water which is going to be, which is going to last only for three days before they will dig another hole. We are reminded that the Loki communities are those like the inhabitants of Mbome village, with water of any kind, however unclean. In the same water well that our people are drinking is where mosquitoes are breeding. So apart from just drinking dead water, our people are drinking uh, water which has mosquito eggs. Beneficiaries, civil society and government partners score PPCR high on results achieved during the pilot phase. Despite the improvements in livelihoods brought about by PPCR funded initiatives, the needs remain vast and funding remains limited compared to demand. When you look at the demands and the needs, it's really a drop in the ocean. The needs are greater than uh, the, the resources you know, can achieve. Not just in the areas where we are, closer uh, neighbors of where projects are being implemented, but this is true countrywide. The Climate Investment Fund is a partnership of all the multilateral development banks coming together and working with and for the country to deliver the program. You have the World Bank, which is uh, delivering on the Barotse Basin project. We have the African Development Bank that's working in the Kafui Basin. And we also have the IFC that has a private sector intervention that is uh, being designed. We are asking that uh, we have this program expanded because uh, our people here are in trouble, agriculture is failing, and the situation is just very bad on the ground. There is uh, a strong case for, uh, for expansion simply based on vulnerabilities of various words, of various communities. Let us also enhance our ways, especially of community-based early warning. The world community is coming together and recognizing that we need more resources. We wish to encourage PPCR itself and the, our donors to continue. The reason that the PPCR model has been successful uh, and it's work in progress but it's moving towards that success is because countries really received uh, resources at scale. We are very grateful for the World Bank's vision for, for sponsoring this, uh, some of the climate resilience programs.